to show you what the climate is like right now in California, SoCal. Um, <clears throat> I have in this garden this tall cilantro that's doing fantastic. Um, it's, it's a slow bolting variety so I haven't harvested it from here for a while and it's starting to flower but I'm going to cut it down and use it for something. <clears throat> Same here, I haven't been using my tatsoi, which is making lots and lots of uh, vegetable and now starting to flower, so I have to get to it. Uh, so it went from mild afternoons to, and cold freezing nights where I didn't want to come out too early because it was so cold. I was hibernating indoors under the covers doing what I had to do to get people to work into school and then uh, returning and trying to s stay warm so um, and it went from that to the last two days it's in the upper 80s super hot because we weren't used to this and we had all the windows and doors shut because of the cold and now <clears throat> we're starting to bring fans indoors and try to get <clears throat> cool again and back to taking cold showers and the next few days will be in the 80s upper 80s as well <clears throat> so it went really quick so here are the borage coming up on their own and uh, I stuck some canes from the canna lilies into the ground and they're starting to come up and over here, let me get to it. So the loquat is getting bigger and taller. Now it's about five feet tall. And, um, sorry, I just lost my slipper there. Okay, there. So this is the first time that I saw the new buds come out and they're a lighter color like light light green see that in clusters that is so cool i think i missed it last year or it wasn't as obvious because there were probably not nearly as many branches so it's getting quite tall and i suspect if not this year then next year we'll have fruit from this tree um and hopefully it's the sweet variety i was trying i was trying to get seeds and grow them from the sweet variety and the canna lilies they were suffering because it was so cold that the leaves were freezing over or drying out and getting burnt from the cold and now it's starting to make a new flower so it's coming back so my onions are doing fantastic. Um, I should pull them up pretty soon. Some of the bigger ones, like that one right there, I can probably pull out and get a like a smaller or medium sized onion from it. I don't expect to have huge onions because um, you know you're growing it from a bulb from, and it's uh, not going to be the same as probably not even the same variety as the grocery stores that choose large varieties <clears throat> i'm super duper happy that my um, anaheim chili pepper plant survived the winter it overwintered fantastic it is so tall it's probably three feet tall and little baby new leaves are coming up these are all new little leaves after it had lost several leaves from down below, like this this one here. Um, and this other chili pepper. I think that's the shishito. Um, survived. I kind of kept them tucked with some plants here, trying to keep them keep it warm. And I pushed all the all the um, the mulch towards it to kind of keep it from getting too cold and these um this plant here may not make it um although it's gotten warm the last few days and um i was trying to overwinter 
It's a bell pepper, but a lot of them froze over when they were still tiny. So I'm gonna have to pull those off. Try to keep these plants a little warmer, tucked in a little more, and hope that they survive just a little longer until it warms up again. All my cold hardy plants are doing fantastic. More anise, nasturtium, brassicas. These are uh, collard greens. Some um, snap peas, snow peas that my daughter loves. I gotta get out here and get them picked for her because she loves them. My bolts are starting to show up. They're the hyacinths. And that's something that overwintered. I think it's like uh, carnations. Some more bulbs over there. It looks barren here. Here's a little nub that's coming up. And calendula are a great flowering plant for the winter and spring. Um, they suffer a little bit in the heat of the um, summer, but I believe it is a perennial, so it'll just keep coming back. And what I do is when I see that the flowers are dead, I'll just deadhead it. And sometimes there are mature seeds and I'll just scatter it. And just it'll ensure more flowering and a healthier plant. And I'll just pull off the tops there. So, I mean, it is gorgeous. I love the golden colors. This is a different variety that I threw the seeds in last summer than the ones that I have in my other videos. Over here I threw some more uh, brassica seeds. I think they are also color greens and I'm hoping it'll fill this up and kind of help keep this area moist um, below this apricot tree. And I have a bunch of things, just cardboard and stuff that's kind of overwintering, keeping the ground warm near my plants. I was really worried about a couple weeks ago because all I saw on my goji canes was just brown twigs and I thought oh my gosh it had died because I had brought in too much mulch and now I see leaves coming up and they're also coming up here on the stalks so I'm not afraid anymore I'm so happy I'm so thankful over here my Kara Kara orange is flowering look at the tiny little baby oranges i hope i get fruit this year it is been it's been a long while and i wonder if i stunt the growth of this plant because i keep bringing in mulch however it's making lots of blooms here's my kefir lime leaf it's making tons of blooms as well and i'm excited and this Mexican lime tree is now six feet tall and it is giving me lots and lots of blooms. It's fantastic. I'm excited about that as well. I did learn, however, that blood orange, blood oranges are a later season crop. So that explains why there aren't any flowers or blooms on both of these. This is this is one type of um, blood orange, and this other one over here is another type of blood orange. One's in a pot and one's in the ground. I just kind of put them all over here so that they can keep each other warm and, you know, um, keep them from the winds and stuff like that. <clears throat> but I'm going to definitely find a place in the ground for, for all of my potted plants this year. And regarding citrus, I did some research. If you have those cuties or those tangerines or mandarins and you want them like the store-bought cuties where they don't have uh, seeds, they're gonna always be easy to peel, the mandarins and the tangerines. But if you want them to not have seeds, you have to grow them like hundreds of yards apart from each other so that the bees don't pollinate one type of citrus and then go to fly to the other tangerine tree or um, uh, what do you call it mandarin tree and uh, pollinate the other cross pollinating because that is what causes it to have seeds.